Help support the companies that support our community. So this is going to be the base of the box and it's two inches, about two inches thick by four and a half inches in diameter and I'm going to go ahead and put it in between centers and then just true it up real quick and put a tenon down on one end so I can grab it in the chuck. So I have the lathe speed at 3000 RPMs and I'm using a spindle gouge. I'm shaping the outside of the box and then creating the tenon on the base of the box. After I get that done, I switch over to the number one hollower to get it all cleaned out. And so I get asked about the number one hollower quite a bit. So even like a box like this where it goes around the corner a little bit, you can clean out the whole thing with this one tool. So I get pretty far around the corner here to clean out the sides of it and it works really well. After I got it all hollowed out, went ahead and sanded the inside and outside of it, ran through all the grits up to 600 and then flipped it around and used the jaws to expand and hold onto it. So these ones were a little bit big. I went ahead and switched over to the smaller jaws and used those. Then I brought the tail stock up to support it. And again, the lathe speed is at 3000 RPMs and this is a spindle gouge. So I'm just bringing around the bottom and then cupping out it out just a little bit so it sits nice and flat. After I got it all cleaned up, I went ahead and ran through all the grits on this again up to 600. So I'm going to switch back over with the spur center and so this is the same diameter and thickness as the last one and this is going to be for the lid. Same process here, just clean it up a little bit, put a tenon down on, on one end of it and then so we can get it in the chuck. So with this one, I'm going to match that tenon that I just made on the bottom of it. So I'm using the calipers to measure that and I'll put a mark on the top of this with that. So I'll create the recess here for the tenon. And for that, I use a parting tool, just clean up the sides of it and then switch over to the number one hauler to clean out the center of it. So I do a little bit of shaping on the top, not a whole lot. Just kind of get a rough shape down and I'll part the actual lid off and save the other piece. But I'm just kind of rough shaping it to, to get an idea, you know, what, it, what it's going to look like. And then same process here. I run through all the grits up to 600. So normally I use the wax or the oil when I sand, but with this one, I'm gonna glue a finial on the top of it. So I'm just kind of waiting for the oil for, for all of it. After I get that done, after getting it all sanded up, use the parting tool to part it off. And then we'll mount it back on the chuck using that recess and have the jaws expand and hold on to it. So we can clean up the top of it. So the finial on this one is a little bit of a kind of like a pot shaped. So what I'm going to do is 
create a little cup in the top of it so that it accepts the finial and you'll see that here in just a second so this little little bowl i'm dishing out there is going to hold the hold the finial so i just get that all cleaned up and sized and then same process here run through all the grits sand all the way up to 600 and then we'll be finished with the box part of it So for the finial, I'm going to use a piece of monkey pot I got from a friend of mine. Trent gave me this. It was a pretty big piece. I cut up this, this chunk of it so it's a nice straight grain. So what I'm going to do is I glued a, a threaded insert into it so I can mount it onto the joiner jig. So I put it in between centers. It's all everything at this point is running true on it. So we'll go ahead and get it trued up and then create that little little pot shape on the bottom of it. And again, the lathe is still at 3,000 RPMs, and I'm using a spindle gouge on this. Now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and kick it off center. So with the jig, there's 10 holes on the back of it, and we're going to move it to the number two position. Number one is center, number two is a little bit off center. So there's 10 different positions you can put it in. So and with this, when I always, always Ooh, before the lathe, you turn the lathe on, make sure it's not going to hit the tool rest. And again with this, the lathe speed is at 3,000 RPMs. So when it's running fast like that, it's safer to do stuff like this. And you could see that ghosting in it, so you, you know where you're cutting. So just take light little cuts, but the faster you have the lathe going, the better it is, especially for something like this. So I'm using a, a half inch spin, uh, I think it's a half inch or five, maybe it's five eight spindle gouge to start out with just to clean off some of the material and then I'll switch over to a smaller one when I start refining it. So when I turn it off here, you can see that there's a flat spot on it. So that's, I need to keep working at it to get rid of that flat spot until it's all true. So I just keep working my way down and going further in. So I keep, I turn the lathe off all the time to figure out, you know, how, how much f further I need to go and just make sure everything looks good.
you can see there and everything is running true and that little flat spot is gone. So I'm going to go ahead and, and rotate the indexing plate on this. So the main plate has 10 holes on the back of it and the indexing plate is has 24 positions on it. So it's on zero right now. So I'm just going to move this over to number two and I will just kind of rotate it around, move, tighten everything back up and then we'll do the same thing. And I'm gonna bring the tailstock back up to support it while I'm doing that. So even though the main plate is still on number two, the indexing plate is now on number two, which gives it a different position or a different offsetter. Make sure it's not gonna hit, make sure everything's tight. And fire it back up. And it's the same thing with this. When you turn the lathe off, then you can see that flat spot on it. So we're gonna go ahead and just keep working at it. Now that we have that one done, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the ending indexing plate again. So I'm gonna move it back to zero and do the final top one. So it's in the number there the zero position on the indexing plate so the bottom one and the top one are both in the same position they're both true at this point clean everything up 
and bring it down. And it's the same thing with this. I turn it off every once in a while to see where I'm at and just go ahead and keep working my way down, back down it until I get rid of that little flat spot. I'm going to finish this off and you're going to see here in a, just a second how much pressure that tail stock gives to it. So when I do break it, finally break it free, it isn't running true and it's because the tail stock's up there holding a lot of tension on it. There we go, we got it all done. So I'm going to go ahead and run through all the grits, sand this whole thing up and then we'll get some oil put on it. No, it's not mustard. I just keep the wood glue in a mustard bottle. So I just used some Type Bond 2 and glued the finial to the top of it. And we'll, now we'll get some oil on the, the box. There we go, I got it all done. So the box is Maple Burl and the, the finial is Monkey Pod. I haven't turned much Monkey Pod. I used to make these little stands out of it years ago, but I haven't actually turned much of it. It actually turns really nice and it's a nice dark wood too. 
So I think it came out really nice. It's uh, four and a half inches in diameter and six and a half inches tall. So about eight, mo eight nine months ago, we were at a show and we had a lidded box there that Robin just loved it. And we had it as, as a display piece and a friend of hers fell in love with it. So she said she could have it if I promised to turn her another box. And this is the style that she fell in love with. So I finally got it done months later. I hope you like it. It's just, I, I really like the way it came out. Very nice. And I haven't turned a finial like that with a bigger bottom on, on it like that. So I just recessed it down in there just a little bit. So full disclosure too, I, here is the, I, so I took a dowel, turned a finial, just a test piece to see what it was going to look like. So I turned that and the box there is the third one third box I turned. So there's the first one. I got the base of it done. I was sanding it and the side of it. It was a little bit punky and it just broke off. So there's number one. Number two, I got the base all done, all finished, ready to go. Had the lid all done, had the recess in it, put it in the chuck. I was just touched with the tool to clean it, to start shaping the, the top of it. It was in the chuck, and I'll show you a little video here. It, as soon as I touched it with the tool, the part, the, the recess, right where it goes together, right there, was way too thin. And so the, the, where it came over the tenon, and there was just hardly any wood there. As soon as I touched it with the tool, it just, just exploded. Anyway, number two and number three. It finally got, got it done. All right, it was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're not gonna have a video next week, but I hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas and happy new year and happy holidays. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care.